Hey everybody, it's Coach coming back to you and I have a loaded video for you. At least for you Carnival fans out there. Carnival. Some of you really, really enjoy the experience that the cruise experience that is that cruise directors give us when we're on a cruise. Um, they can really, you know, bring a lot of extra fun, excitement, enjoyment to the cruise if they're good, if they do a good job. And there are several, several really, really good ones within the Carnival fleet. I'm sure everybody has their favorites, but as most of you probably know, those of you that do agree Carnival directors offer a lot to a cruise experience, you know that they generally saved the best of the best for their best ships. And what ship is up next? Well, we just had the Mardi Gras come out, right? And after that, its sister, the Carnival Celebration will be coming. Today, I'm dropping a bomb because I'm going to let you know who's going to be the cruise director on the Carnival Celebration come this November. Okay, it might surprise some of you. Some of you might be like, yeah, I can see that. But we're going to go over the four finalists right now. Okay, so we have a final four. And your first finalist to be the cruise director on the Carnival Celebration is one Mr. Mike Pack. And those of you that are Carnival cruisers have cruised with Mike in the past, you may know that he's great. He's great. He wouldn't be a finalist if he wasn't great. Very, very good at his job. Brings a lot of fun, brings a lot of laughter, brings a lot of energy to any cruise that he's directing. And one of the other things, I mean, his crew loves him. Okay, and the Carnival suits love him. Why do I say that? Well, when the Carnival Horizon was coming out, he was awarded that. That was their newest ship, and they said, hey, we want you to have the Carnival Horizon. And, um, you know, obviously that was a tremendous honor at the time. He gratefully accepted that, and he was the cruise director for the Horizon for a few years. Then he stepped away for a minute and, well, you might remember a one Matt Mitchum who was supposed to be the cruise director of Mardi Gras, but he stepped away from Carnival and they said, hey, who are we going to get to do this? And they thought so highly of Mike that they gave him the Mardi Gras. So he went from the horizon and then I guess you could say it was a promotion to the Mardi Gras. And is he gonna get promoted now to the newest ship, the Carnival Celebration? Well, obviously he's going to be considered strongly by the suits at Carnival, and he's already proven that they trust him with their best ship. Let's go on to finalist number two, who Mr. Mike Pack knows very well. Why is that? Because he's married to her. That would be one Emma Nixon. And you might be saying, Coach, okay, you know, you had me there with Mike. That made a little bit of sense. But uh, yeah, Emma doesn't even work for Carnival anymore. You're correct. She's taking a year off. It's my understanding. I believe she's, she's doing some teaching, which is close to my heart, obviously. Um, but look, she was one of the best. She was my favorite cruise director personally, me personally, she was my favorite cruise director at the time when she left. And I was so disappointed when she decided to leave the Panorama. Um, I didn't actually get to cruise with her on the Panorama, but I did cruise with her on the, uh, the Freedom, I believe it was, she was on before the Panorama. And I just loved her introductions and her cute little phrases and everything. And again, she brought so much energy and was very genuine. And uh, I just, you know, I like to try to impersonate her, but I, I know I do it horrible, but you know, every morning it's, hello, this is Emma, you know? <laughs> and again, I apologize, Emma, when you see this video, 
um, because I know that sounds nothing like you, but I, I do that in a very fond way. And uh, her little easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and all her other little cute little phrases that she would say. And again, um, just just very genuine. I think that Carnival could try to entice her out of, not retirement, because she, she's working, but entice her to come back because they realized just how good she was, how much her cruisers loved her, and it would not upset anybody, cruisers, that is, to see her um, operating another Carnival ship. You could say, well, she was on the Panorama, and that was her ship, so, you know, why wouldn't she just go back there? And that's a solid argument. Why wouldn't she? Well, maybe, maybe to get her back, they would have to entice her by offering her the celebration. So she is our second finalist. And up next, we're going to give you our third finalist. All right, finalist number three. And this finalist is an up and comer. I've had the privilege to cruise with her at least four times that I know of. Three times this past summer when everybody was coming back from COVID and one time previously when she was just starting out filling in for cruise directors that were going on vacation or, or something like that. And that is one Miss Kendall Fire. Let me tell you, she is bringing the fire. She's bringing the heat. She has stepped her cruise director game up and she wants it. If you caught my video, and if you haven't, I'll put the link in the description of this video. She called out months ago, this summer in July, that she intended on getting her own ship. And I'll tell you what, she sets goals and she conquers them. She oh, she goes from one goal, she knocks it out of the park. Okay, and let me just tell you, it's not just that she won something and she works hard at it. She is good at what she does. I'll tell you what, before you know, I started the channel Coach Cruise, I started it in July, the same time that, that you know I saw Kendall on the Carnival Vista. And I would, the first week, I went with a buddy of mine. And um, I remember the first time she really came up to me, we were standing in line at the Java coffee shop and she was walking swiftly with one of her colleagues, apparently on to the next venue or introduction or whatever it is that the cruise directors do because they're so busy. And she noticed us and Again, she was, you know, 10, 15 feet away, but she stopped, she turned around, came over to have a discussion with us. And again, there's three, 4,000 people on the ship, but honestly, I forget what the discussion was even about, but it wasn't that, you know, I was a, a YouTube um, cruise person or anything like that, because again, I had just started the channel out. So it was just that personal interaction that she does with so many cruise passengers. And I did a couple Q&A um, videos with her. And again, you can go back and check those out. But you'll see her talk to people in the audience and she just calls them out by name like she's known them for, you know, 15 years or something like that. And she's like, yeah, well, see, you know, I know this coach here. That's Betty over there. That's George. He likes, you know, uh, Doberman Pinschers. And, you know, I mean, she just, you know, she has an uncanny ability to get familiar with people and and really get to know them and, and just just make you feel you know a little a little more special than you might otherwise with just any only other uh, cruise director not only that but i mean she's she's goofy she's funny she um she really like i said she she livens the party up uh whether it's on the lido deck or whatever else but it's that extra personal touch that i think really sets her apart and i think that's what the Carnival Brass is recognizing. Why do I say that? Well, because if you noticed in the latest cruise director assignments, who is going to sub in but one Miss Kendall Fire? She is moving from the Carnival Vista to sub in on the 
Carnival Mardi Gras, which just happens to be the sister ship to the Carnival Celebration. And at the conclusion of her working that um, cruise director on the Carnival of Mardi Gras, what would happen then is she would have about six to eight weeks break until the debut of what? The Carnival Celebration. So what I think is they could possibly be giving her a final test trial to make sure she can handle that ship, which again, it's the sister ship to the Carnival Celebration. So if she knocks it out of the park like she has on the Vista, I think they very well could give her the keys to the Carnival Celebration and she could possibly be that next cruise director and get the ship that she wanted and uh, she'll have earned it. And finally, we are going to an ex-candidate and we will talk about that right after this. Okay, so you see the picture there. Mr. Matt Mitchum himself, who when he was awarded the Carnival Vista, that was his ship. I, my wife and I, we went um, to Europe. It was our first Mediterranean cruise and we were one of the, the first cruisers on that. I think we probably did about the fifth or sixth week that it sailed and we sailed from uh, Athens to Barcelona and Matt was the director at that time. You know, he cruised with him several times after that. The ladies fawned over him. He's a, he's a handsome looking guy. I think most guys will, will admit to that and he was very good. He was excellent. Um, it wasn't just that he was a pretty face or whatever. He's another person that just really got after it. And uh, male, female, although I think female more so than male, um, were very fond of, of him and uh, just everything that he brought to the table as a cruise director. He was, I guess, Carnival's close, closest version of a, a celebrity for their cruise line. And... I mean, he was talked about. He was talked about in the entertainment industry and, and people recognized him for that, you know, Hollywood face or whatever. And um, that's why he was gonna get the Mardi Gras. And for whatever reason, um, you know, there's there's rumors and him getting involved and certain other things like that, but he left Carnival. And uh, I think that was a surprise to Carnival. I think that was a disappointment to, to Carnival. But what other way to make a huge introduction to a new ship but to bring back one of their former all-stars in the man of Matt Mitchum. I think this is a very very real possibility if you go to Matt Mitchum's Facebook page it doesn't seem like he's all that busy I'm sure he's busy but I mean it's not like he's um, the cruise director on another ship or anything like that so you know if, if you throw enough dollars at him I think it could be something that could entice him just enough. Maybe he's getting that itch to get back to being a cruise director again. And I think it's a very, very likely possibility that that is something that the Carnival Brass has thought of and they're thinking over. And um, again, he could be the finalist. So let me tell you who I think will ultimately win out. Let's eliminate, and we'll get down to our final two. Okay, the first person I'm going to eliminate is Mike Pack. All right, not because he's not worthy, not because he's not great. I gave you the reasons why he got his own ship, and um, he's done very well on those ships. The Horizon, the Mardi Gras, he's knocked out of the park. People love him. But the thing is, the Mardi Gras is a sister ship to the celebration. So it's not like he would be getting promoted. It's more like a parallel move. So why wouldn't you just stay with the Mardi Gras, you know, if you're going to be the cruise director? Um, the other thing is, you know, we, we just talked about Matt Mitchum. Uh, when Matt was on the Carnival Vista, the Horizon was a sister ship to the Vista. And Matt stayed on the Vista, okay? And, you know, Mike Pack took the uh, Horizon. So you know, why wouldn't they have moved Matt up to the horizon? Because again, it was a parallel move. So, you know, it doesn't really make much sense. So he just stayed on the Vista. 
So I believe Mike, if he stays as a cruise director, he'll stay on the Mardi Gras. That'll be his ship. Let's go now to what I had said was uh, my favorite at the time, Miss Emma Nixon, Mike's wife. And although I would love to see her come back because she's great, she's wonderful, I think she's still going to stay doing what she's doing. I think, um, you know, Mike and her, you know, really value that, that time that they get together by both of them not being cruise directors. Because again, um, you know, if you work on a ship, you're really, really separated from your family and your spouse and children if you have them. And um, it, it makes it difficult. And with them being married, newly married and all, um, I, I just don't see that happening. I, I think it could happen, but I don't think it will. All right, now that gets us down to our final two. And if you're keeping notes, that is Miss Kindle Fire and Matt Mitchum. Okay, you know how they say where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, with Matt, I haven't even so much as seen smoke yet. If they were going to make some crazy announcement or there were some rumblings or rumors or whatever, but I really, really haven't heard too many rumors about him coming back or or him being cruise director again at all. Maybe some of you have. If you have, you know, put that in the comments. I'd be interested to find because he could really be an X factor. Um, if he were to go to Carnival and say, hey, you know, I'm willing to get back at it, I really believe they would take into strong consideration to giving him that opportunity to be a cruise director on Carnival Celebration. But again, I don't really see it happening. And that leads me to announce the cruise director of the Carnival Celebration that will cruise in November for the first time will be led by one Miss Kendall Fire. Ms. Kendall Fire is the cruise director of the Carnival Celebration. You heard it here first from Coach Cruz. So share this video far, share it wide. Give me plenty of likes if you agree with my breakdown or, you know, I guess um, the, the way I'm looking, going about it. Or honestly, I may have completely forgot to list somebody that you think is more deserving than the four finalists that I put down. Or if you don't think uh, Kendall is um, worthy for whatever reason, put it down. Um, I, I'll tell you what, uh, gained a, a lot of cruise friends over the summer. I know my, my friends over at the Channel Island time, Derek, Amanda, and uh, and everybody, they, they really feel like Kendall's um, you know, an all-star as well. And I think they'd probably agree with me. But what do you think? Um, if you like, put it in the comments. I'd love to see comments. I'd love to see the likes. And uh, feel free to share this video. Let's get it out there. Let's get those rumors going. Okay, that's what makes cruising fun, right? The talk, the talk about new ships, the talk about the cruise directors, the talk about the things to do on the ship and everything else like that. But um, I really do feel like Kendall is, is um, going to uh, knock it out of the park. And I am so happy when I heard that cruise director assignments because I'm going to be on the Mardi Gras three times this summer. So I'll get to see Kendall three more times. So uh, Kendall, you give me a high five or something because I got you on the Carnival Celebration. And congratulations, Kendall, you're getting your ship. If it's up to me, you're getting your ship. All right, everybody, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed doing it and done one in a week or so. So uh, I, I hope, uh, hope you had as much fun as I did. All right, cruise team, we will see you later.